Welcome to the chow line. I hope you're hungry because on today's menu we're serving the M1908 Haversack Ration Grocery Component. So grab your mess kit and let's dig in. From the construction of the box to the size of each individual component, everything has been recreated down to the last detail, including dipping the entire finished ration in wax to seal it, just like the original. The full haversack ration represented the first real attempt by the American military to provide its soldiers food able to be stored long term without spoiling, carried with them into combat, and then eaten when supply by field kitchen was not possible. The grocery component shown here was issued along with one 8 ounce box of hard bread packed in fiberboard and one 12 ounce ration of bacon carried in either the 1910 or 1916 bacon tins. When available, a suitable ration of canned meat was given in place of the bacon. Issued between 1908 and 1916, the grocery component was commonly used in the pre-World War I years during the punitive expedition and stateside with National Guard units. When the U.S. entered World War I, this ration item was replaced with the refillable metal condiment can. Through, though issued up through 1916 and early 1917, no documentation exists to show that this ration component went with American troops overseas to France during the Great War. Shown here with the 1908 Haversack ration are various ration and mess kit components that would have been issued to an American soldier in 1916. Since the grocery component is meant to be an accessory to the main ration items, I will show you how to utilize its contents in conjunction with other issued food. Here we have some examples of hard bread, each one representing three major producers of the era, like National Biscuit Company, Edgemont Brand, and Union Biscuit Company, better known as Cracker Jack. These here are also chow line reproductions, but won't be used in this video. They're for a future video. Instead, we're going to use something a bit more special and unique. This here, inside the 1910 mess kit, is M1896 Field Bread. A holdover from the Spanish-American War, troops were still trained in how to make this field bread as late as 1916, but it was never used during World War I. Made from flour, yeast, lard, salt, and water, it was cooked directly in the mess kit and makes for a hearty addition to any soldier's diet. This one has been prepared in advance. A future video will be released showing how you can add this to your kit. Here are three canned items, common to have been issued to American soldiers during the punitive expedition. Canned meat, canned potatoes, and canned tomatoes. In this video, I will prepare these in two ways using the grocery components contents. Before anything else gets opened, we're going to have to take a look at the Haversack ration grocery component. So let's get up close and personal. Here, taking a look at the outside of the box, we can see that it's wrapped in brown craft paper, just like the original would have been, with all the markings clearly displayed. It was then sealed in wax, and this little ration was so compact and well suited to living in a soldier's pack that it take, took up little space. Taking just your regular mess kit knife, we'll begin by trying to make a small cut through the paper in the top, where we know one of the flaps are. Perfect. Doing it this way can actually save the little ration for display later on. Two more incisions down the side. And there we go. Upon opening the box, we are greeted with, first and foremost, the little salt packet. Secondly, we have a large block of sugar at the bottom. Let's see if we can't get that out first. There we go. That's actually quite a bit of sugar.
unlike the other components of this ration, this is actually left in unwaxed paper. Next, that's going to leave the coffee and the pepper. But, as we'll see here, it's actually going to be very difficult to figure out which one is which. We can take that box back, fold it up, and set it to the side for later. So, here we go. One is your coffee, and one is your pepper. In the originals, it was almost impossible to tell which was which. And just like this reproduction, it is, again, nearly impossible to tell which one is which. However, we can do a smell test, but the wax, because these are actually dipped in wax in order to preserve them, keeps most of the smell away. I suppose we're just going to have to wait until we open these up in order to take a look at what one is what. Coffee or pepper, or coffee or pepper, our sugar, our salt, and then the ration box it came in. Later on, when we open the canned goods, we'll see exactly what is inside each one of these little packets. Everything has been taken out of its can and box. Now, I will be preparing this food in two ways. First, the grocery component will be used to make stew and then to pan fry the food. But before we get into that, let's take a look at what's inside the boxes within the grocery component itself. We're going to grab our mess kit knife and figure out which one of these two boxes here is coffee and which one is pepper. Prying up the end just a little bit as we can work the corner off. And it looks like this is coffee. Very good. Which means this one here will be pepper. Using the same method, slide the mess kit knife underneath one of the flaps, tear open a little bit, and there is our pepper. Very good. We'll put that down to the side here. Next, we'll need to open our salt. Again, the same method. Careful not to spill too much. <laughs> and let's take a look at how the sugar presents itself. In order to maintain such a large rectangular shape, instead of filling it with loose contents, this is actually filled with sugar cubes. Now, we're going to get into a difference between the reproduction here and the original. The coffee, the salt, the sugar, and the pepper would have all been compressed into blocks by a 12-ton press. That is simply not something which can be done here. But for the purposes of what we're doing, this works fine. Now, on to making the stew. First, what we're going to do, set these things aside for right now. We're going to take our beef, okay? Take a spoon, and let's divide this in half here. We're going to use our mess cup, the 1910 canteen cup. All right, it makes a far better bowl than it does a cup. So, we're going to take this beef and just toss it right in, okay? We're done with the beef for right now, so we'll set it back. Now, let's make some of the tomatoes. All right. 
Let's just cut these up. We don't need to be fancy about this, but we do want them to cook. Good, it's tomato mush. Take that, put it in. Let's put two in there for good measure. Now with all the food that you saw earlier and see here, this will actually feed quite possibly three individuals. Putting that to the side, we're now going to cut up some potatoes. Okay, there's one. Now these come in the can fully cooked and ready to go. There's another one. And for good measure, put the third one in. So, we have our stew ready to have water added to it. Take water from your canteen cup. And let's fill it pretty high here. Very good. Now, remember the salt from earlier? We're going to take about half of this and dump it right in. We're going to need that salt. If you were out in the field, not only do you get dehydrated, but you lose things like salt. Okay, that's about half. And now I like a particularly spicy stew. So we're going to add a ton of pepper. Oh man, that looks great. So here's what we have going. We're going to take this, we're going to stir it in. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Now, we're going to do something else too. We're going to add a sugar cube. Actually, we're going to add two. It makes it a little sweet, but more importantly, we're looking for caloric intake. That's what you need when you're out in the field. Okay? So the stew is being set aside. And now, let's get set up for our fry. All right, now that we've cleaned up a bit, let's prepare our 1908 haversack ration in a second way. What we're going to do is we are actually going to fry this meat up this time. So we're going to take the 1910 mess kit bottom. Let's just take the rest of this meat and dump it right in. Okay. Take that, put it to the side. Let's get some of these tomatoes. We're going to put that in too. Now, what you can also do is, uh, since the lard was used to make field bread, you can add lard to the mess kit in order to help fry things up. But we're just going to pretend that we didn't have enough. We'll take the tomatoes, put them to the side. We are finished with those as well. Now it's time to cut up our potatoes. Let's cut the potatoes up. Put those in there. Very good. Now, we're going to take the rest of this salt and sprinkle it on. Seems pretty salty, but the fact is that if you're out in the field, you need this. And, like everything, save this. You never know what wax paper will come in use for later on. Okay, we're going to take the pepper now, too. Let's put some pepper in there. That looks pretty good to me. And then what I like to do, I take the bread off of the lid. In order to get the seasonings all over everything, take the lid, snap it on, and shake it. All right, it's all mixed up. So I'm going to take this plus the stew, go heat these up. But in the meantime, we're going to brew some coffee. So let's get this all cleaned up and get to brewing. All right, now all that's left to do is make our coffee. 
Now, you'll notice that I don't have my 1910 mess cup sitting in front of me. The fact is that I have always found that makes a better, say, soup bowl or something to use in the chow line, rather than struggling to try and take it out of your uh, canteen holder every single time you want to, say, get some coffee. So, what I do when I go to reenactments or eat in the field, much like the soldiers during the punitive expedition, World War I, World War II, really any wars to be completely honest, is actually carry an extra little cup. This here is just a regular tinned cup, nothing particularly special, something that a soldier during 1916, the punitive expedition, would have easily been able to get. And what we're going to do is we're going to brew the coffee that came with the haversack ration, and I'm going to show you how to do this. Now, one method is to simply take your coffee grounds and pour it in the cup. That works, but then you end up eating coffee. Another method is to filter the coffee with a little bit of cloth after you put in your warm water, but we don't have anything extra to filter it into. So what I do, and this is well documented, is to actually take a little bit of string that we see here, a spare piece of cloth, and we're going to put the coffee grounds into this cloth, tie it off, and essentially make a small tea bag. And we're then going to put that little coffee bag into our heated water and let it percolate. So let's do that. Open this up a little bit more and do our best to pour it into one large pile. You'll also notice that I don't have the sugar cubes here. I don't like sugar in my coffee. I prefer cream only. However, we don't have any cream with us today. They would have used either condensed milk or evaporated milk. And we simply don't have any. So we're going to make do with some straight black coffee. So let's take this. As you can see, it's been made into a little pouch. Tie this off. Very good. And now we have our coffee bag. See that? We'll just take that, put it right down into the water. to let that sit. All right. Eventually, that coffee will start to filter out. We'll have a nice, delicious brew by the time the rest of our food is done heating up. All right, and everything is now done. The food is done, our coffee is brewed. It looks like it's about time to dig in and see how things turned out. First and foremost, let's take a look at this field bread. We're going to cut this in half, and then we're going to cut it into quarters. That looks fantastic. Some there, some here. Take that, put the extra aside. All right, time to see how the coffee turned out. Looks like that bag did its job. So we can take that, remove it, and we're ready to drink. How'd our stew turn out? Well, it's pretty hot, I gotta say. Warmed up nicely. Look at that. Piping hot. Not sure if you can see the steam coming up. There we go, yeah. And it looks great. 
let's see how our pan-fried meal turned out. Absolutely fantastic. Look at those potatoes. The beef crisped up in a little bit. Oh, fantastic. I'm going to have some right now, actually. That looks delicious. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, it's pretty amazing sometimes. Mm. How good this old food really does taste. Well, I suppose we're done here. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Chow Line Reproduction M1908 Haversack Grocery Component. I'll see you next time in the Chow Line. Stay hungry.